Reuters.com exclusive U.S. government's boxed food aid promise falls short. Spoiler alert, government giving away millions of dollars equals millions of dollars being swindled. The U.S. government delivered far less food aid than it had pledged by the end of June, according to food bank managers and data from the Agriculture Department sent to Reuters after it hired inexperienced companies to box food during the pandemic. The Farmers to Families Food Box Program, one of several new government efforts to relieve struggling Americans, aimed to take food from farmers typically produced for restaurants and deliver it to the millions of people who lost their jobs or were otherwise hit by the coronavirus lockdown. But the program has drawn criticism from food banks, analysts, and some U.S. senators for awarding contracts to often inexperienced vendors that were unable to source the food and deliver it in a timely manner. Don't worry, this article ends with a really good example. Data sent to Reuters show the program fell short of its target to deliver $1.2 million billion worth of food to ba- food banks, churches, and other organizations in need by June 30, a goal announced when food box contracts were awarded to private vendors on May 8. The agency expects to verify a total of 27.5 million food boxes delivered from the first round of the program, a USDA rep said in an email. That is equivalent to 755.5 million, according to calculators by Reuters, based on the average cost of food boxes provided by the USDA, or 63% of the $1.2 billion pledged. You know, if this was, no, I mean, I got to jump in with the libertarian alternative here, right? That if, if, if you gave money to a charity and you found out that a third of that money was wasted and that's that's being kind to government with that as an estimate here you would stop giving them money you know and it, it, yeah, I got to make another comedian reference to uh, Chad Daniels or is it Dan Cummins who says you know when when you pay your taxes it's not like going to the store where at least you get a receipt. You know, I go to the I go to the gas station and I buy soda and some beef jerky, the most inconsequential purchase possible, and they give me a piece of paper that says, you know, here's how much. When you, you give the government a third of your income, they just take the money and say thanks, except for the thanks. So no, you would stop. You wouldn't keep doing business. This is this is. Not this. This is so destruct. This is government hurts people in need because it takes money from people who can help by paying taxes and spends it in the most inefficient, ineffective, corrupt ways possible. Now, just just to zoom out for a second, we go to our next story. Small business aid went beyond hard hit companies. Data show from the Associated Press. The government on Monday identified roughly 650,000 mostly small businesses and nonprofits that received taxpayer money through a federal program that was designed to soften job losses from the coronavirus, but also benefited wealthy, well-connected companies and some celebrity-owned firms. Surprise, surprise. The Treasury Department's payroll protection program approved applicants from a broad swath of industries, some that were less directly impacted by the pandemic, such as manufacturing and construction, received a greater proportion of the loans than the hard-hit restaurant and hotel industries. Many law firms and private equity companies also obtained loans. Remember, the purpose here, I mean, the bigger purpose is always the rich get richer and the poor get poor. The bigger scheme that we're witnessing economically is a reboot of the economy. And and reboot really is a good term as a computer-based analogy to say, yeah, we're going to shut it down and boot it back up. Like Trump said, We are going to see a lot of restaurants shut down, but don't worry, they'll come back just with new owners. That means it's being restarted, rebooted with new people in control of things they shouldn't be in control of, more consolidation of wealth and power in the hands of the few. The next story from unionbulletin.com. Just, gee, which businesses exactly got the bailouts and the handouts unfairly? Businesses associated with Trump administration officials among recipients of coronavirus loans. 
Businesses associated with President Donald Trump and members of his administration were among recipients of COVID-19 small business loans, newly released data show. Iron Gate, ASREP, BWLC, Trump's business partner and hotel and residential tower in Waikiki, Hawaii, received a loan from the Paycheck Protection Program in the range of $2 million to $5 million, according to the data released on data, which shows loan ranges. They didn't even know the exact amounts. Calls to Trump, Waikiki, outside of normal business hours there, weren't immediately returned. Now, it gets better. The next story from APnews.com, Kanye West, the Girl Scouts, hedge funds, all got PPP loans. And I wonder about this. Kanye West, right, saying that he's running for president without being specific. I think this is a ploy for him to get votes for Trump. The government's small business lending program has benefited millions of companies with the goal of minimizing the number of layoffs Americans have suffered in the face of the coronavirus pandemic. Yet the recipients include many you probably wouldn't have expected. Kanye West's clothing line, the sculptor Jeff Koons, law firms and high dollar hedge funds, the Girl Scouts, political groups on both the left and right. All told, the Treasury Department's Paytech, Paycheck Protection Program authorized $520 billion for nearly 5 million mostly small businesses and nonprofits. On Monday, the government released their names, the names and some other details of recipients who were approved uh, for $150,000 or more. Now, you know, as libertarians, oftentimes we, we look at government program names and go, hey, it's going to backfire, you're going to get the opposite effect. And, you know, sometimes, sometimes we're exaggerating. But in this case, it's like, well, geez. Paycheck Protection Program. What's it actually doing? Making it harder for you to get a real sustainable paycheck. So back to the article from Reuters about the boxed food aid. Because this really gets to the depth of the evil of this corruption. So you know, go, skipping ahead here. Uh, when the deliveries come through, Trotter said the program has provided high-quality food to a rising number of out-of-work Americans. The Greater Chicago Food Depository has seen a 90% increase in people served since January. So this, first, this background. That means it'll round up to 100%, whatever. Uh, uh, roughly twice as many Americans... Today, then in January, pre-corona, are going to food banks, can't afford groceries, or would prefer not to so that they can afford rent and cell phone bills at this point. This is something that we are capable of as a society, as a species of feeding people in need, and it's a beautiful thing. And it is a horrific tragedy that we entrust this function to government, and here's just one example why. Among the vendors not renewed in the second round was event planner, Texas-based Create a Date LLC, and that's spelled out C-R-E and the number 8, A-D-8. The company pronounced Create a Date had to hire people for Every role needed to fulfill its $39.13 million contract. That means this contract was awarded to a company that had no existing staff to handle the contract. Now, I'm sure they were able to hire some people who are recently laid off due to the coronaphobia pandemic. But are they protecting your paycheck with this money? No, this is essentially a temp job based on a government contract that just went away. Now, according to Houston Food Bank's Green, create a date, deliver just 17 out of its 90 promised food box loads. $39.13 million 
to do 90 loads. They delivered just 17 of them. The rich get richer, the poor get poorer. And with people like this, whoever's behind create a date, taking advantage of the system, the poor might just be going hungry soon. That number, 90%, was just for Chicago. According to the article, by early June, the number of Americans facing food insecurity doubled compared with pre-coronavirus, according to data from the U.S. Census Bureau's weekly household pulse survey. If you care about taking care of poor people and those in need, you have to oppose government having anything to do with anything like this. 